Welcome to another video and today I decided to film something that I have been wanting to film for a while but have just been very nervous about doing it because I didn't know how to approach it. So in this video I kind of want to talk about something that is, I personally feel like is a very serious topic that needs to be um, more paid attention to and something that I personally deal with in my life. I just want to hopefully make people understand what it's like dealing with this. Like the thought of even putting this out scares me because I just feel like people will look at me differently and people will just like judge me and things like that. Kind of like distancing themselves from me because of this and I'll be back to being an outcast again. It's like I know it's going to happen anyway. So as I've talked about before on my channel, I'm someone who deals with depression. I'm not really going to talk about like the root of where my depression comes from. I have talked about it before on my channel, but if you want to hear that story, which I hope also can help people, um, it will be up here or like linked down below. But yeah, as I said before, I'm someone who has depression. I deal with it several times a year. So it's not like once in a while. It's not like every once in the blue moon. It's constantly throughout the year. It lasts for like a duration of time for me. I don't know how it is for everyone else. I'm just speaking personally from my experience. You know, so sometimes I can be depressed for like for like a week and a few days or two weeks or a week and a half or you know a whole month or almost borderline two months. You know, it, it lasts a various amount of times. But along with just like shutting down and just like feeling like you're worthless, it also comes with the burden of dealing with suicidal thoughts. The reason why I say it's a burden is because I personally deal with that constantly. So it's like every time I get depressed, it's like that's attached to it. So it's not like, oh, I'm just depressed and there's nothing else. It's like, no, I'm depressed and I also am having these thoughts. And I feel like most people just think, oh, it's just because you're sad. So it's like you want to just like harm yourself. It's like, no, it's much more deeper than that is what I hope I'm going to try to like teach you all to kind of like open your eyes to it. But it's like, it's much more deeper than just, oh, you're just being sad. That's it. For me personally, it's like when I get depressed, I clock out. It's like, I'm not here mentally, I'm not here spiritually, I'm just there. You know, just, my mind is blank. Like, I don't feel anything, I don't hear anything, I'm just like in a whole different world. When I'm just like sitting in that silence, that's when, out of nowhere, these thoughts just kind of like infiltrate my head. I just hear like constant replays of like, the like hurtful, negative things I've heard growing up about myself. You know, just people saying, you know, you're worthless and you know, you, you know, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you know, no one cares about you, you know, you should die. Just things I've heard constantly growing up as a kid from like bullies. I'm dealing with these like words that like have scarred me mentally. It sticks with me every day. And those are like the words that kind of like loop in my head when I get suicidal. And it's like when I hear those words just looping in my mind, that's how I feel. I start to believe them. And the part for me that kind of freaks me out sometimes about myself, over the past few years, I have thought of several ways to kill myself. Fast and painless, or make it slow and painful, or, you know, how to make it like not so messy, you know, so there's not blood anywhere. How to, you know, make it unnoticeable, how to make it like an accident, how to make it look like I disappeared and no one can find me if something happened. When I kind of snap out of it, it's like, I don't feel like that's me, you know, and, but it is. And it, it, it's scary because it's like, how can I sit here and just think of like, literally hundreds of ways to like, you know, end my life. It's just like having those thoughts in my head, just like stored in my mind, it, it, it's, it's scary because it's like, I wouldn't even like harm anybody else. So the fact that I can think of several different ways to harm myself is just very, very concerning. And of course, you know, I have like seeked help. We try like several different, you know, therapists and things like that. They weren't making any progress in helping me. So we kind of stopped going to a therapist because they were pointless. 
they weren't really helpful. And it's hard because I can deal with it by myself. It's, it's challenging because I also feel like people expect so much from me. Everyone just expects me to be like, you know, always positive and happy and cheerful, being like a vibrant person. When I get to that point, you know, I've had friends who just thought I was being selfish. That makes it twice as hard to deal with this because I feel like people just look at me like I'm selfish because it's like, oh, you know, Mickey doesn't take the time to check up on me. Mickey doesn't take the time to, you know, reach out to me or anything like that. And it's like, it's like they don't understand. You know, I've tried to reach out to friends before. They either don't understand or they respond like days later. And it's like, you never know. You responding days later could be too late. I've already had one close call where I almost didn't make it. It's something that you can't ignore, you know, because I also feel like people think, okay, well, you can ignore it. You don't have to, you know, resort to just that. And it's like, no, you can't ignore it. Because for me personally, it's like, it's constantly like pounding in my brain of like, do this, do this, like, just do it. And the reason why I'm sure why a lot of people, including me, why we don't reach out is because so many people try to guilt us for feeling this way. Which is why I've also been like so nervous to just like talk about it. When I get to that point, I feel like the only way to stop those terrible thoughts is if I just can't hear them anymore. Constantly feeling that way is why I feel like I should end my life just so I can't feel that anymore. For me personally, I just feel like it's to just escape my problems. You know, just to, you know, get away from those negative words and, you know, that haunt me and just that feeling of being like left on the outside and just feeling alone. It just feel like that's my only escape. It's not easy to deal with that because it's like the fact that it happens a lot it's just, it makes, you know, just living hard for me. I just feel like I'm not like normal like everyone else. I kind of also blame myself, you know, when I feel this way because it's like, why can't I just be normal? You know, why can't I just be like everyone else and not have problems? But I, I guess, you know, I just have to deal with this. Maybe people bullied me because it was my fault. You know, maybe that's why I have depression now because it's my fault. That maybe that's why I have suicidal thoughts. It's because I am the reason why I allowed that stuff to happen and now it's my fault that I feel this way. And it, you know, I just feel like it always comes back to me in some way, shape or form. And that makes it worse for me because it's like, well, if it's my fault, then I should deal with it this way. You know, so it's just, it, it's confusing, I'm sure. That's just how it feels. But I always feel like it just resorts back to me. Every inconvenience in life, every issue that I have, every time I get depressed, it's because it's my fault. You know, maybe if I was like more perfect or maybe if I, you know, did something better, maybe I won't be depressed or maybe I wouldn't be suicidal or maybe you know, I could just be normal. It always comes back to me in my case, you know, like I'm the reason why this stuff has happened to me. It's kind of what it feels like to deal with this. To deal with having suicidal thoughts. It's just like, it's my fault, you know, people hate me. It's my fault people don't like me. It's my fault people don't care about me. It's my fault people don't love me. It's my fault people, you know, find me annoying. It's my fault people don't like me. It's my fault people that I do know probably just smile in my face and hate me behind closed doors. Like, it's my fault. It's my fault. But that's kind of like how I feel personally dealing with suicide and having suicidal thoughts. So for the people who deal with this, like I said, it's hard to just like rely on other people. You know, I, I, like I said, I know it's hard to like talk about because you just feel like people are gonna like judge you and shame you and guilt you because you know, you have suicidal thoughts. Sometimes what I do is I just like get my, my PlayStation controller and just fidget with like the analog stick and just fidget with the buttons for like a while until I like fall asleep. So I guess to kind of like help me not put anything else in my hands that could potentially hurt me. You know, I would just suggest trying that. It works for me personally. I know several different things work for several different people, but that's something that I try to do to like, when I get 
suicidal and I feel like the urge to do it. I just try to like fidget with something and distract myself. So I think that's about it. So, you know, if you made it this far, uh, thank you for listening to my possible like rambling mess. Hopefully this was insightful and this kind of like book like the importance of this to a lot of you. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.